So now we're going to talk about the nomenclature of amines, and uh, we're first going to look at them as being the main functional group, and we'll just kind of look at the systematic way of doing this. And first thing, you got to realize that the nitrogen could be bonded to as many as three carbon chains. So you want to pick typically the longest, or sometimes the most complex, but usually the longest carbon chain it's bonded to. So in this case, I'm going to start off with a simple one here, and this is just bonded to a three carbon chain. Uh, and so that longest chain is going to be propane. Uh, we want to uh, make sure the nitrogen gets the lowest possible number, so we'd number this right to left. Notice the nitrogen itself doesn't actually get a number. Um, but in this case, we number it right to left. That way, the nitrogen is carbon 1 instead of carbon 3. So we're going to use an N as a chain locator. If there are any other carbon chains of the nitrogen, we have to give their location as being the capital N, not something we've got to worry about in this case. And then finally, uh, we'll use this amine suffix, and we'll use the appropriate chain locator to say where it is. So in this case, this is propane. And we'll drop the E since amine begins with a vowel sound, so we, that way we don't have that vowel-vowel thing going on. So, and this is propan-1-amine, and being the only functional group in the parent chain, we could also put the one at the beginning and say 1-propanamine. Cool. Now, one other thing we got to worry about here is that as a simple amine, and this one's fairly simple, there's another accepted nomenclature here for a, a common name here. Uh, and for this primary amine here, we're just simply going to call it an alkyl amine. So in this case, instead of propanamine, we'll just refer to this as being a propyl group. And so we'll just simply call this propyl amine, all one word here. So that's the simple way. So whether you got the systematic or the simple name, uh, both could be something you're held responsible for. So here we've got a little more of a complex example, and I can see the nitrogen's bonded to three carbon chains, but this one right here is definitely the most complex, and then whether I go to here or here, doesn't matter. Uh, and I'll number it to give the nitrogen the lowest possible number, so one, two, three, and four. And that leaves us with some substituents. We've got a methyl group attached to carbon three, but we've also got a couple of methyl groups attached to the nitrogen itself. And so when we go to name the substituents here, we've got three methyls, so we're going to say trimethyl. But when I go to give their locations, two of them are attached to the nitrogen, and so I actually list them as being attached to the nitrogen. So we're going to say NN2 trimethyl. So we'll start off there. And in this case, a four carbon chain is butane, and with the suffix amine again, so this is going to be butanamine. And whether I say one butanamine or butan one amine, either is acceptable, so I'll say butan dash one dash amine, or again we could have put that one right there instead and said NN2 trimethyl one butanamine. Both would be acceptable. Um, if we were going to try and name this in some sort of common way, so as a simple amine, well one, it's not that simple, so this is about as complex as you're going to start getting and stuff like that and maybe get away with this, and probably at this point we just go with the systematic um, but just in case you want to see, so this is a five carbon chain and it's an isopentyl group. Uh, and that's pretty much bigger than you're probably going to see anything you've got to do for a simple name. So we'd throw it out right off the bat. But if you wanted to see it, one, you probably didn't even know it was called an isopentyl group. That's usually bigger than you need to know. Um, but we'd call this an isopentyl methyl methyl amine. Um, but like I said, beyond the scope of what you need to do. All right, finally, what do we do when the amine is not the highest ranking functional group you have, so then you're going to name it as a substituent. So here, the highest ranking functional group we have is this carboxylic acid right here, and so we're going to name this as a carboxylic acid, and we'll uh, give the carboxylic acid priority in the numbering system as well. And so in this case, we're just going to name the amine as an amino substituent coming off, across our, coming off our carboxylic acid. So in this case, it's attached to carbon 3, so we'd say 3 amino to start off, and it's the only substituent we have. And then for a three carbon carboxylic acid, we already learned early in the semester that that is uh, propanoic acid. So this is three amino, whoop, that's an N, propanoic acid.